Thank you, Madam Speaker. Madam Speaker and members, as was outlined in the last amendment uh, by Representative Hurtos, um, the direction that the governor's executive orders arising out of his usurpation of the uh, authorities that he has given, been given in law have been disastrous for our state. We have killed jobs, we are hurting families, we have had people in this state who have been not able to have their illnesses diagnosed properly, and we still haven't seen the, the fallout from those in the area of public health. Members, the governor of Minnesota has paid almost twice the median household income of his state. The median household income in Minnesota is now $65,599. And the governor of Minnesota is paid $127,629 a year. Madam Speaker, Governor Walz has awarded himself awesome unilateral power in this time of crisis. As a matter of fact, Governor Walz has decided by executive order that he is so powerful that he can single-handedly suspend the salaries of hundreds of thousands of Minnesotans. Madam Speaker, if the governor feels that he can suspend the salaries of others, then I believe that it is right that Governor Walz equally feels the pain of the economic damage that he has caused. And members, don't get me wrong. This isn't something that is shared by the legislature. This isn't something that was passed here. As a matter of fact, we've had efforts to suspend his authorities in this area that are causing this damage to our state. So this, members, is one person in the state of Minnesota that has brought us into the condition that we are in today. Members, as such, my amendment moves to suspend the governor's salary until the peacetime emergency declaration has ended. And Madam Speaker, let's recap. The governor started out saying there was going to be 74,000 deaths. And he, and he said, he said he was going to ask us, ask us to shut down the state of Minnesota. And actually, he ordered us to shut down the state of Minnesota and said that when we do that, and if we do that, we will have between 55,000 and 50,000 deaths. That was what he said, and that was the discussion at the time. That was what he said to propel us into government shutdown. Well, members, after that, uh, he took his failed model, the phony model that they won't even give us the numbers for, Madam Speaker, we don't even have the numbers for the model. They took that model and adjusted it to 20 or 22,000 deaths. As a matter of fact, today, Madam Speaker, uh, while every death is valuable and cherished in our state, there's been about 500 deaths from this terrible disease. But it's not the same condition that the governor used to scare Minnesotans into this shutdown that is, is damaging every single day to our economy, our families, our people, and our institutions throughout the state of Minnesota. So members, the governor's big government power grab has really not sa sa saved a single life. I haven't been told of one life that this big government power grab has saved. As a matter of fact, if you look at the numbers and think about the number of people who have had their health care upended by these executive orders, and we will see some of them come forward over the next few months, the failed diagnosis that didn't happen for heart disease, the cancer that continued into the next stage of development without being made aware of it because we closed down our hospitals and they've been empty for the last several weeks. But members, if you look at the states around us, every single state around Minnesota has less deaths per million people than the huge shutdown state that Governor Walz is steering here in the state of Minnesota. In Minnesota, as of today, and members, I outlined this last time, the numbers haven't changed. 
since I discussed this a week or better ago. In the state of Minnesota today, in our region, we, we are leading with 92 deaths per million people. Unfortunately, we are leading. The government shutdown is not pushing our numbers down. Many of the states around us didn't shut down, including the state of Iowa. Not 92 deaths per million, but 74 today. Including the state of Nebraska. Not 92 deaths per million, but 45 million deaths per million today. They didn't shut down. Utah didn't shut down. They're at 19 deaths per million today. Neither did the state of Arkansas. 29 deaths per million, not 92 like the big shutdown state that Governor Walz has pioneered in the state of Minnesota. South Dakota, our neighbor to the west, 36 deaths per million people. Minnesota has 92. North Dakota today has 41 deaths per million people from, from this terrible disease. They haven't shut down. They're having greater success there than we are, like the rest of these non-shutdown states are having compared to our 92 deaths per million in the state of Minnesota. And members, Madam Speaker, the state of Wyoming didn't shut down. They're doing better at fighting the disease their people are than we are with the hand-tying big government policies of Governor Walls here in the state of Minnesota. Wyoming is at 12 deaths per million people, while the state of Minnesota is at 92. Madam Speaker, Governor Walz's decision to shut down our economy has created chaos in our state. I reviewed the numbers on the health side. Now let's look at some of the economic realities. Just look at the numbers and look at the science. Members, Madam Speaker, Minnesota's rate of labor force unemployment as of today is nearly 16%. Meanwhile, the labor force unemployment rate for the seven states without stay-at-home at orders are as follows. Members, these are the same seven states I just talked about that are doing much, 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 much better than Minnesota at keeping the death rate down from this terrible disease. These states, in their economic realities, again, Minnesota, almost 16% unemployment because of this big government shutdown. South Dakota didn't shut down. Their unemployment is 7.2% today. Utah, 7.7%. Nebraska, 9.1% unemployment. Wyoming, 9.7% unemployment. Arkansas, 13.2% unemployment. North Dakota, 13.7% unemployment. And Iowa, Madam Speaker, 13.9% unemployment. All seven of them are outperforming Minnesota in resisting the economic calamities that come with this disease because their states did not shut down. Madam Speaker, we knew that this pandemic would harm our state. However, the added pain of arbitrarily shutting down our economy has simply crushed us. The numbers demonstrate Governor Walz's failed strategy. Furthermore, we have seen state revenues evaporate what was just weeks ago a projected $1.5 billion surplus went down $4 billion to $2.4 billion in the hole. Governor Walz shut down revenue streams to government as well. Conversely, Madam Speaker, if you look at the state of South Dakota right next to us, they didn't shut down. Their sales tax revenue is currently up. 4.5% from the same period last year. Their citizens have been allowed to continue working, shopping, and supporting their economy. This increased revenue will ensure that their state budget is not crushed like our state budget is. Of course, Madam Speaker, the question that comes to mind is how many Minnesotans 
are fleeing this big control, big government shutdown state to go to North Dakota or South Dakota and spending our money there. I don't know the answer to that, Madam Speaker. But in Minnesota, roughly a quarter of all state revenues comes from that sales tax. However, we are now facing an 11.2% loss of sales tax revenue in the state of Minnesota because we have shut down our state. 4.5% up in, North, in South Dakota and 11.2% down in our state. Governor Walz created a huge problem for Minnesota. Meanwhile, South Dakota is better prepared to weather their storm because they have seen sales tax revenues increase. Minnesotans are beginning to open up for business on their own because as Representative Hurtas pointed out, people will not be governed if you don't have their consent. As a matter of fact, we uh, are seeing lots of those types of things happen throughout the state. Um, we, are, we saw in the uh, city of St. Paul recently, yesterday, the day before, Madam Speaker, um, the, uh, there's a barber in St. Paul, his name is Mylon Denny, and he defied the unconstitutional executive order of our chief executive um, and decided to stay open so that he could try to save his business and try to save his family's future. The government came in and forced him to shut down back down. We're seeing basketball hoops taken down in the city of Minneapolis. We're seeing police tape in White Bear Lake wrapped up around the jungle gym, telling the kids, you're not welcome here anymore. Jason Mao's rideshare business in Truman lost $10,000 in March and another $15,000 in April a small business with two employees members, how long do you think he's gonna last under this job crushing executive order? The Plainview Wellness Center in my district, Brandon Ryder, the owner, was in a position where he had to open now last week or go bankrupt. They served him a letter the first day they opened. $1,000 fine or 90 days in jail plus $1,000 every single day you're open. Now he's suing the state for this unconstitutional edict. Members, people will not follow laws they don't respect. And that's what we're seeing in the state of Minnesota and it's only going to pick up. We've got to do some things in this body to get us on a different path and a different course. And it's time for us to step forward. Members, this, the people of Minnesota get it. They know we have to go a different course. They know this it, policy is not working. They know the governor is wrong. It's time for him to admit he's wrong. But short of that, we're going to be listening over the next several weeks or days or months, depending on how long the Governor Walls continues the path we're on. We're gonna be continuing to hear and see from Minnesotans that are thinking the exact same thing that Representative McDonald's Uncle Flip always used to say. And I know he's not here today, but Representative McDonald, I guess you're probably on the phone. But Uncle Flip used to say, how dumb are you? And that's a sad state of affairs, members, and Madam Speaker, if that's where we are today. Members, Governor Walz has been playing poker with the livelihoods of hardworking Minnesotans. If he is so confident that we are on the right track, then he should have no problem putting his wallet on the table. Thank you, Madam Speaker.